Okay, uh, welcome to Unit 4B. Before moving on from database technology onto learning, we're going to cover one more emerging aspect uh, that goes beyond MapReduce. In particular, we're going to talk about graph-based parallel computing uh, using the Pregel model. If you recall, our guest lecturer talked about various types of graph-based problems uh, which are important, like computing shortest paths and uh, Steiner trees and things like that. Uh, essentially, what's happening is that for many of uh, these problems which are quite important uh, in emerging applications, the MapReduce model has some limitations. We discussed some of these in the last uh, lecture uh, and we'll revise those uh, as we go along. Uh, just uh, let's remember uh, MapReduce one more time. We have a situation where we have mappers, uh, where mappers essentially read the data at random and decide based on your map function which key to sort, the, sort this data on. And then the reducers uh, get the data sorted by the key that you decided in the map function uh, and uh, the platform does the sorting and the reducers essentially process the data for every key uh, in parallel uh, and then output the data. This is the MapReduce uh, model. So let's revisit some of the uh, challenges and potential solutions that we looked at a while back. Many applications require repeated MapReduce. PageRank will be one example we'll talk about a little bit later. So there are many ways of trying to uh, optimize MapReduce if you have to repeat it many times. One is to make it more efficient by avoiding copying data between successive reduce and map phases. Second is to generalize the model itself uh, by using arbitrary combinations of map and reduce and pipelining of data between them. And the third is a direct implementation of recursion in a MapReduce-like environment uh, the graph model is one such model uh, and there are many examples of it which we'll talk about uh, very briefly uh, also. Uh, and then there's another model called the stream model which is uh, being developed at Stanford. So let's, 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 let's delve into the Pregel model with uh, an example and how uh, we might do it in MapReduce as well as in an alternative graph based model. The problem that we consider is uh, the matrix vector multiplication. Now, for those of you who have forgotten your linear algebra, uh, a matrix looks something like this, and a vector is uh, a one-dimensional version, whereas the matrix is a two-dimensional array. And when you do matrix vector multiplication, what you're really doing is taking a row and multiplying every element of this row by the corresponding element of this vector uh, and then summing everything up. So the first element of this product will be minus 1 times 1 plus 2 which will be 1. Similarly the second element will be 1 times 1 minus 2 plus 3 which will be 2. The third element will be minus 1 times 2 plus 3 which will be 1 and the last will be minus 1 times 3 minus 4 which will be minus 1. Now let's see how one might implement this in MapReduce. Assuming that we have a very large matrix and a very large vector, we would like to do this in parallel. In MapReduce, we'd uh, possibly do it like this. Take each element Aij, which is a whole bunch of uh, uh, elements in any any order in various different files and they have to somehow go to some mapper. Once they get the mapper, the mappers are going to sort these by column of A and the row of X. So that means is that a mapper will emit the key J for AIJ. If it reads something called AIJ, it will emit J as its key, telling it to go to the Jth reducer. Uh, and for any element of x, it will just tell the jth element to go to the jth reducer. Obviously, each 
real reducer has a bunch of j's which uh, it gets. So, uh, each reducer will get a bunch of columns of a and a bunch of rows of x. When it when a reducer j gets all its elements, it computes the partial product a i j times x j. Since it's getting the values of a i j for every j, uh, it's also getting for, for a bunch of j's, the x j's for a bunch of j's. It just multiplies them up for every i. In other words, the jth reducer will compute, say if j is equal to 1, will compute minus 1 times 1, 1 times 1, 0 times 2, uh, times 1, 0 times 1, etc. So, it will compute everything for this column multiplied by the first element of x. Similarly, reducer number 2 will compute all the multiplications of the second column with the second row of x and so on. Now, that is not enough because we still have to add these up this way. So, the second map reduce will do the following. It will distribute these partial products which are now columns. So, each reducer has a bunch of columns after they have been multiplied by the appropriate element of x and distribute it by rows. For example, the partial product y i j in the uh, vector y prime j will get sent to reducer i and then these will get added up for example. So, the idea is that these now will get distributed by rows. So, part of this will go to one reducer say the first two rows and second two rows will go to another reducer and then they will get added up over there in parallel. Essentially, what we have done if you think about this uh, carefully is we have written this matrix vector product as a block multiplication. So, for example, you can write A as a bunch of columns or sets of columns. So, A1 could be individual columns or uh, A, A1 could be a bunch of columns and similarly X1 could be an individual element of X or it could be a bunch of uh, elements of X uh, or rows of X. And if you write this matrix vector product A x as A 1 A 2 up to A p where p is the number of processors that we have and x 1 up to x p and obviously if you have p processors you have to use appropriate bunches of columns uh, of A and rows of x and then you just do a similar matrix vector multiplication here it becomes A 1 x 1 plus A 2 x 2 etc. And so essentially it is the sum of these partial products. The partial products are exactly what reducer p computes. So, the processor p computes this partial product and in the, in the first phase of MapReduce and the second phase they all get added up. Study this carefully uh, because uh, it is kind of important uh, to understand how matrix vector multiplications are done using MapReduce. This is just one way. There are other more efficient ways of doing matrix vector products using MapReduce. But now let us come to a question of how we would repeat this multiple times if we had to do so. And we actually have to do so using in, in applications like computing page ranks, but there are problems.